Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. It is Sat Chat time. I'm actually filming this on Thursday afternoon because I am about to go teach a class in a couple hours. And um, it seems like whenever I have to leave the house to do something, then the rest of the day, uh, I I don't know, it's hard, it's hard to like really dig into other projects the rest of the day. So um, I spent all day yesterday working on um, on filming some stuff for the colored pencil course that I have coming out soon. I keep thinking, oh, I'm gonna have it done th next week, you know, and next week rolls around, like, oh, I'm still, I'm still adding to it. <laughs> so I did a bunch of filming yesterday. I have a whole list I was going through. I had, I saw this video called The 11 Hour Month, and um, it was this productivity guy, and he's like, oh yeah, you can get 11, uh, you can get more work done in 11 hours than the average person does in a month. And so I spent, um, Tuesday getting set up to have that 11 hour day that was going to be super duper productive and by like wrapping up projects I had in progress I filmed a bunch of videos that I wanted to do for YouTube um, finished up a bunch of projects there was a couple projects that did not pan out the way I had hoped so I had to scrap those ideas but like I and I and I tied it up and I got ready so I could have the most productive day ever yesterday and I did get a lot done but it definitely was not as productive as I hoped it would be sadly but uh, it's coming, it's coming, it's still, I still have a lot of work to do, I've got stuff rendering right now, I've been uh, picking away at editing today, the stuff I filmed yesterday, so I don't forget parts and stuff, if the stuff that I needed to add and whatnot, um, like I just took a couple other photos I needed to add to one of the videos, um, but yeah, it's been, it's been a wild week. Um, oh, by the way, I've been, uh, I've been doing Plain April, although I fell off the wagon yesterday because my, such a productive day yesterday that I was going to have, it was like nine o'clock, I'm like, I can't also do a painting for Plain April. There's just no, ain't no way that's going to happen. So I, uh, I ended up posting one of the, one of the uh, projects from the uh, colored pencil class. But yeah, I was just like, okay, I need to just, I need to rest. I've done a lot today and I need to, uh, I need to, to, uh, I need to rest. I need to rest. I'm still kind of tired today, but, um, so that's the other thing. I wanted to save up my, um, my painty energy for the class tonight, and that's what I'm doing. And I figured, well, today's hair washing day. Um, I might as well, you know, I'll have to blow dry it because it's not going to dry on its own. It's pouring outside. Um, so why don't I just, like, get presentable, because I have to be presentable to go out into the world anyway, film... <laughs> film sat chat or I don't look like a sketchy hobo and then you know do all this in one day um so yeah um speaking of landscape painting plein air all of that my watercolor landscape workshop is still on sale it's on sale for the rest of the month 40 percent off in honor of plain april if you want to grab that um, I'll put a link in the video description so you can um, so you can check that out. Um, it's been it's been a weird week. I've had been in one of those um, existential crisisy modes moods. I don't know. I, it kind of happens periodically. It will happen when the weather's crappy, which has been very rainy. Except it was actually really nice last weekend and Monday for the total eclipse of the sun. And um, I was like, all, all along, people ask me, oh, are you going up north for the eclipse? You're going up north? I'm like, no, I live really close to the path of totality. I'm just going to watch it from here. It's going to be 99% coverage. It's, you know, I'm going to see the eclipse. And did not have the urge to drive north. Uh, for one, I do not like crowds. I do not like traffic. Um, I do not like driving. There's so many things I do not like, you know, that would be in, rolled up into the, the eclipse experience. Um, but then... It was, but then, you know, start talking to people and, and people are going north. Everyone I talk to, it, it seems like has got eclipse mania and they're driving north. And then I'm starting to feel like I'm missing out. I'm going to miss out. I'm missing out. And so last weekend, Saturday, went to uh, Portland to visit my daughter, Lila. She goes to college down there. And uh, we went around, we had uh, lunch, we had... Um, we, I went to two art stores. Oh my gosh, you guys, two art stores, and I got some goodies. I, you know, and it's nothing that would be that impressive for a haul because it's like, oh, I got a few of these pastels, and I got a few of those pastels, and I got this pen, you know? So I'm like, I don't even know if it's worth doing, doing like a video about the things I bought at actual art stores. Although I'm always interested when I see people actually go to an art store and it's like they are selecting things very intentionally because, you know, you're paying full price for it in an art store, so you're being very intentional. You're not just buying sets upon sets. Um, you know, you're, you're picking and choosing, you're being very careful with what you, with what you decide because you have to carry it in that, in a lot of cases, like you're carrying it around a store. It's not like you just keep adding, adding, adding stuff to a, to a bag. Um, so it's two stores, art stores in Portland. So that's kind of exciting. You can let me know if you want to see a tutorial. 
uh, not tutorial, a, uh, we'll definitely be using them in tutorials, but you can let me know if you want to see a, uh, you know, icky haul video. <laughs> Just let me know what the heck, you know, I need some views, <laughs> I should do one. <laughs> oh gosh, this just video feels like it's full of despair. It's because my, it's because my superpowers are locked away because my hair is up in a, in a bun. So I don't, <laughs> I don't have my charming superpowers right now. And I'm tired. Uh, and I'm having existential dread. But, um, so we did that and we went to the crypto, crypto, <laughs> went to the cryptozoology museum and if you don't know what cryptozoology is it's basically the study of animals that may or may not exist big emphasis emphasis on the may not exist so you know i saw so this, this like all this like evidence and um and whatnot of like bigfoot and yeti the abominable snowman the Loch Ness monster which is my favorite um potentially um, imaginary beast is I love the Loch Ness monster. That would be my favorite, and and unicorns. There was no unicorn evidence, but there was a Bigfoot, Yeti, Loch Ness monster, um, uh, Mothman. Uh, what other things? There was like this Lewiston werewolf thing, which is a little bit of local local lore. Uh, and what else? There were a bunch of other little little thing little like animals that could maybe maybe or may not exist and um and that was just kind of interesting my husband's a big bigfoot fan so we went to check that out and um i get a lot of anxiety being in cities i think mainly because i'm not sure where i'm allowed to park and um <laughs> lila's like parking on the street is free on sundays and i'm like oh i hope so <laughs> Because, like, they want you to download an app and then pay in these apps and stuff. Uh, and it's just like, I am a, such a country mouse that this is also overwhelming. Um, but anyway, we, we did that. And we're so we're, we're getting our parking to go into the Cryptozoology Museum. And, like, is an hour going to be enough? It was plenty, friends. It was fun. It was fine. There's actually one in Bangor that we've never been to, but we'll have to check that out at some point just to compare. But I got a nice selfie with Bigfoot, and I'll have to post that on Instagram at some point. But, um, yeah, it was it was fun. It was interesting. I am a sci-fi fan, so, like, I like it from that uh, that aspect of it. Um, and I don't want to yuck on anyone's yum. I mean, it was fun. It was fun to go and see. And I guess there's some convention. There's going to be a cryptozoologist convention at the end of the month in Portland. So any of you guys are local and you are cryptozoologists, go check it out. I don't like crowds, so I won't be there, but, um, uh, I'm not sure there'll be a crowd, but anyway, um, that was, that was interesting. That was something new. I have not done that before. So anyway, I was talking to Lila and Lila's like, yeah, me and my uh, roommate decided this morning that we're going to go up, we're going to drive up tomorrow and go see the eclipse. And because I brought a couple of pairs of eclipse glasses from them. Our library had, uh, our library is so awesome. That's where I'm teaching tonight, by the way. They had, um, they bought like a big box of a thousand ISO approved, um, certified, eclipse glasses and so I went in to get some for me and my husband and the kids and the librarian gave me some extra pairs. She's like, if you don't don't take photos of the eclipse with your phone or your camera, you gotta put something over the lens. So take an extra pair, uh, put it like cut it in half, put it over over the lens. And so I took the extra pairs and I didn't cut them, um, which was really lucky because um my Jackson, my son's girlfriend's mom had bought the eclipse glasses on Amazon and she got in, she got an email a refund on Friday night, an email saying, don't use those glasses. They're not safe. They're counterfeit or something. And so she's freaking out and she's made plans to go up North to see the totality and she has no glasses and she, and every place is sold out in the area. And so, um, I had two extra pair because like Kelly had given me the librarian had given the extra ones for the phones. And, um, so I'm like texted her. I'm like, I got two pair, come get them. So she was able to go up, her and her husband were able to go up and see that. So that was really great. Um, and I had my pair and I just like, I kicked back in the backyard and I was watching the eclipse, but all morning, oh my word, I, I just have to apologize. If you are in Critique Club, my biggest apologies to you for the latest tutorial because I know I... I was feeling so much like FOMO Monday morning when I was recording that. And I'm like, I should just go. I should just go. But I had this like this crippling anxiety feeling in my chest that I would get in a car accident if I got behind the wheel. And I was just like, like there was one half of me that was like, you should just go. It's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You're never going to be this close to a fully, a total eclipse because I didn't really know what the big deal was until like, I started watching like uh, videos of like the totality where you get like the the diamond ring and the corona and then you can take your glasses off and look at it for like I wasn't really getting the, the grasp of that um, until like 
I guess the night before and I was like, oh, maybe I am really missing out because I was just, I look at the little diagrams like, yeah, we're, it's mostly covered here. It's, you know, and it was spectacular. It was really cool. Um, so I got up uh, Monday morning and I was, I didn't sleep well. I woke up at like five. I didn't, I was like just feeling nauseous and just like, not nauseous like I was sick, just nause, nauseous like, you know, the, the FOMO, you know, you, you feel like you're missing out. Like you're deciding, you've been invited someplace and you decide you're not gonna go. And then you've spent the whole time when you would have gone just fretting over what you're missing out on. You know, that was the feeling that I was having. And, um, so like it was hard to sleep. I was going to bed. I was like, maybe I should go. Maybe I should just like just get in the car, just go. Just just go, you know? Um then I was like, what if I get stuck in traffic and then I don't see anything? Um, or what if there's an accident? I and the accident thing was a big thing. I was having this really bad gut feeling that I would get in an accident if I went. And so then I and I even had a friend, um, a fellow YouTuber that like lives up in the path of totality, Angela Clark, if you know her. Um, she's she's like, you can come up and watch it here. You can park right in my driveway, so you don't have to worry about parking. And this was like probably like a month ago, maybe it was a few weeks ago, and I'm like, what the eclipse? I'm gonna watch it from here. What are you kidding? I'm not gonna fight traffic, drive anywhere to see that. I can see if it's the sky. The skies, we all see the sky. The sky's right there. We all see the sun. There it is. There's the moon. You know, I'm like, what's the big deal? And um, so I didn't take her up on it. And um, then I'm like, well, she's probably got a, you know, her drive was probably full by now. And, but then I'm like, it was in the morning and I'm like, well, I'm going to call my friend Karen and see where she's going. Her and her husband are going to drive north. And I sent her a text and I didn't hear anything. And I'm like, oh my God, she probably thinks I'm inviting myself to go see the eclipse with her. And I'm like, oh, I'm such a dork. That's probably what she thinks. I'm not, that's not what I was doing. And then I'm mortified. I'm just like, I'm feeling so embarrassed that she, that she might think that I'm trying to invite myself along. And, um, and I probably would have said, sure, if somebody said, hey, you want to ride up with us? I probably would have because I was just, you know, I, I don't know. I was just like really uneasy about driving. So anyway, I sent her a text. And then later that afternoon, she texts me and she's watching it from her backyard. And I look at the text like the, you know how you can scroll back and look at the thread? My text never went through. So then I was thinking my phone is blinking at me. I think I might be running out of battery soon. I'm not sure. But anyway, um, we'll see what happens. Uh, wow. <laughs> Flying by the seat of my pants. That's how I live my life. Um, so I'm like chatting with her. I'm like, did you get my text earlier today? And she's like, no. And I scroll back and there's an exclamation point. It never sent. So I was thinking, cause I know, cause she didn't end up going North cause uh, her husband didn't want to go, didn't want to go up North and they couldn't, she couldn't get glasses anyway. And so, um, I'm just thinking that the fact that she wasn't able to get glasses in time, the fact that I texted her and didn't go through, the fact that I had this really sinking feeling in my gut that I should not get behind the wheel, that like if I had, if that text had gone through and I had, and I talked to her and her husband didn't want to go, I'd be like, well, let's just go. And you know, Thelma and Louise here up the road, something terrible could have happened. You know, I feel like I saved two lives and I have to feel that way. So I don't have that like just, just lingering regret in my soul because you never know if you're going to regret something until you do it. Right. Uh, so I stayed home. I watched the eclipse. My husband was at work. Um, so he took his eclipse glasses in with him and him and he, there's a couple of coworkers here. They took turns like looking at it and it was cool. And I was kind of like wondering, it's like, how long can you look at this with the glasses on? Because I was kind of thinking that this is still pretty bright. I mean, it was like, it was all, it was crazy. Those glasses, every, I think I have them. I have, them right, I have them right here. You want to see? This is what they look like. They're almost like, they're like reflected. They are the, um, I'm really stylish. I can see nothing through these. <laughs> Even with my glaring studio lights, I can't see a thing through these. Um, but that's, they're, they're safe to get the ISO thing. And I can mail these to, um, I drop them off. There's a local grocery store that's going to be collecting them and I guess sending them to Latin America where they're having a total eclipse in October. But anyway, um, what was I saying? Oh yeah. So I'm like watching it and I'm like, I don't know how long it's really fascinating. It's really cool to see because like when you put them on and you look at the sun, you see this like red sun and it's so sharp and in focus. And it's like, wow. Cause like, if you look at, you know, if you accidentally like, like catch the sun in your eye, it's like, wow, it's just like a blinding flash of light. Um, it's crazy if there's like clouds going over it. It's just like eerie. Anyway, the day was gorgeous. It was just like perfect weather, perfect everything. And I'm like, and I am missing this perfect opportunity because I mean, think of all the people where cloud cover happened when they were in the path. Or it's like, this is like a perfect opportunity and I'm just letting, I'm squandering it. That's what I hate to squander. First of all, I hate waste in any form. I hate wasting time. I hate wasting opportunity. I hate wasting, um, like food. I just, I hate, I just hate waste. And just, I was, so I was feeling like I'm wasting this opportunity, but then I was also feeling like, well, I might waste my time if I go and get stuck in traffic and can't see anything. At least here, I know I'm going to see a 90%, 99% eclipse. 
So I was like back and forth, like on a teeter totter with like, should I do it? Should I not do it? Should I do it? Should I not do it? Oh, my phone, my, um, my, my battery had three bars before I started. Anyway, let me change your battery. We'll get back to this riveting conversation in just a second. All right, where were we? Oh yes, my existential dread. So, uh, so I'm like all morning, I'm just like, oh, I should have gone, I should have gone, I should have gone. And then so I'm building my critique club lesson because I'm like, I need to get this critique club lesson up. This, this color pencil class honestly has taken <laughs> so much more uh, work than, than I anticipated. I knew it was going to be a harder class to do just because color pencil, for one, the artwork takes longer to create. And for two, there's I'm using it, I use colored pencils in a mixed media way, so obviously I can't show every single instance of mixed media that I would combine, but I want to get the techniques down and the inspiration so people can take it and move it to, to mixed media and how to troubleshoot, and because I use a lot of times colored pencil to, um, uh, to correct things, so that was has been taking a lot of time. So I had to get another uh, critique club project, and actually this is it. This is up in critique club. This is the one <laughs> where, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm talking about the eclipse scene most of the time. So I'm like, well, I'm just gonna do this, and uh, and meanwhile I'm watching Life Through Sixty because I know both of my daughters are going up to see the eclipse. So it's like I want to make sure that they're safe, and um, and on the way back actually Maisie had to take a detour because she went with some college friends too. Uh, and because there was a crash on the interstate, so, I mean, that could have been my crash, so I'm glad, I mean, on that, on that, because you just don't know, you know, did I miss a once in a lifetime opportunity, or did I save my own life and whoever was riding with me by not getting in a car crash, I don't know, but, um, I'm feeling all right now, but man, I was just like, I had the FOMO and the regret so bad, and it's like something I didn't even know I wanted to do like two days earlier. It wasn't until I went online on social media on Facebook, and everyone's like talking about the eclipse, and people are flying in. I'm like, people are flying in for this thing, and I could just drive there, and I'm not. What is wrong with me? So, uh, so yeah, I was, um, yeah, I was just, mm, I don't know, but I did do a bunch of science experience because John Muir Laws did a live stream about uh, eclipse watching and eclipse sketching, and I didn't do any sketching, but. Um, like so, but I made a little pinhole camera, and then um, my friend Karen was using binoculars to to uh, project the eclipse onto um, the ground, and so I tried that, and I brought a colander out and got a little eclipsey shade, the little half moon crescents, and I was looking at. We don't have the leaves out yet, but through the pine trees where there's like a little bit of filtering, then you had all the really weird shadows on the ground. If it had been like summer with the leaves, the big leaves out, that would have looked so cool. It did look pretty cool, um, and it got dark, and it was funny because mosquitoes came out. I haven't seen any mosquitoes this year, but it was a bright sunny day, and then like when it was about almost fully covered, mosquitoes started coming out. And and I was like, oh my gosh, that's so weird. And it got cold and it got darker. It got kind of like um, a little twilighty. I'm sure not as dark as it did uh, like an hour north in the path of totality, but uh, but it was cool nonetheless. And I did watch the coverage on PBS NewsHour did a live stream and they started in Mexico with like the first uh, totality and they kept like uh, showing it all the way up through Holton, Maine, which would have been, uh, which is that's probably three hours north of me. And then, um, and then they went, I think, probably Newfoundland, I think, was the, was the last uh, landmass to, to hit it, I think. So it was a really interesting day. I mean, I did kind of feel part of it, but I, it was, it was kind of sad watching it alone from home because I think it would have been fun. I think the whole group aspect of it would have been fun, even though I'm not a big crowd fan. I know it's like, what do you call that when it's like, I want to be in the crowd, but I don't like crowds. It's like, I want to be part of something. I want that community, but uh, maybe that's it. I want the community, but I don't want the crowd. But what was kind of nice was that I could hear kids like playing down the street. And uh, I know all the kids in school down the road, all the kids got sent home with eclipse glasses. So, um, and I do know most people didn't drive up to go watch it. So it does kind of feel like it was a big party that you didn't go to, but, um, but still, I just, it was weird. It was weird. I was I couldn't couldn't help the FOMO. Couldn't and I usually don't get sucked into FOMO, but uh, I definitely did in that in that respect. Um, and speaking of FOMO, I apologize last week to all the people that could not get the empty watercolor palettes that I mentioned. That was such a crazy deal. I I mean, part of me is thinking, man, I should have bought two sets, but it was there were six um, metal tins of just to empty half pans. So it was like eighty four half pans and six metal like t t tins. Um, you know, just your standard watercolor tin, and um, I grabbed some just for when I'm 
reviewing paints or trying new colors, trying a new brand, and I want to kind of sequester it, so I'll have them and just use them when I'm preparing for a review. Because, I mean, I do enjoy reviewing things, although I'm going to focus more on reviewing, I think, more, more uh, legacy brand products, I think. I don't know. Um, I got kind of burnt out on a lot of the budget brands last year, and this is my year favorite, so I'm using my favorites and, and finding new favorites and uh, and that sort of thing. And actually, um, I yeah, I I uh, I have not been I've been in a bad way, friends. Been in a bad way. So sometimes I'll see. Usually I stay just right off of Amazon if I don't want to be tempted by anything. Or I'll stay off of Blick if I don't want to be tempted or anything. Or Jerry's or Cheap Joe's or wherever. But um, when I'm making supply lists for things or I'm planning a class and I want to make sure the products that I recommend are still available because and aren't like completely, you know, off the wall price wise, um, I'll be looking around and seeing what there is. And um, and I was curious about core, well, I don't know I was thinking about core watercolors. Maybe I had seen them or, mm, well, I don't know. For some reason I was looking up, I was looking up core waters or watercolors or I came across core watercolors online and I do like the tube paints quite a bit. I have them in my travel watercolor palettes because they seem to dry down like more compactly. I feel like I get more, um, when I use them from tubes anyway, in my portable painters, which I have two set up ready to go to France with me, um, and I've used up quite a few colors because I would buy the, the sets of, first I started off with like one of the six introductory sets of 5ml tubes and the paint just goes so far. Um, I think it's the binder is more compact than uh, gum arabic, they use aquazol and it also makes your blues a lot brighter. There's just a slight yellow hint in um, gum arabic that makes your blues in cooler colors a little bit less vibrant. Um, so that and the fact that there's absolutely no movement, they dry down pretty hard but they re-wet really easily and I didn't want to bring my M-grams in my travel palette because that they just travel too much. They, they spill out, they like kind of like ooze out of the out of their confines and I didn't want to deal with that. Um, so they just stay in a flat studio palette and I use them here in the studio. But anyway, so back to Core, I know they had some pan sets, but their pan set of 12 has been, it, it just seems kind of high compared to their two prices in their introductory sets. So I haven't bit the bullet. It's like I got the tubes. They're probably, it's probably about the same. But I have wanted to try their pan formulation. And they have a couple six color sets. One is an urban sketcher set. One is an intensity set. One is a granulator set. And then they have a metallic set that I'm not really that interested in because I have plenty of metallic paints and I don't use them all that often. I tend to only use them over darker colors, like if I'm doing something more of like an abstract or special effects type of um, type of project. And I have enough to probably last me the rest of my life in those types of projects. Um, and I'm really happy with the ones I have, so I'm not really looking for more of those. But there is a there was a seller on Amazon um, called like NC something. Um, so they're the seller and they're the shipper, and they had these the six actually I can show you because I bought those three sets that I mentioned. Um, so they had them and they were around twenty to twenty two dollars each. And I was like, first I was curious because I'm like, that's a really good price. Blick sale price is $35 on each of these. And the real retail price I think is 45 or maybe 50. So, I mean, it was, it was half price anyway, half of uh, list price. And I'm like, if I had seen these in a store, I would snag them up so fast. Um, and they had been on sale before from this seller and then they sold out and then I put them out of my mind. Um, but then I came across them again and they had all three sets and they were all about the same price. And so, um, and it was free shipping, so I ordered them knowing they were going to be coming from the seller. They had an estimated delivery date of like the 15th, and I got these like three days after I ordered them. So they are legit, and um, I don't know how many they have left in stock anymore. I think there were only five left of certain colors. So I'll, if they're still there, I'll link them up, but I'm very excited to try these out, especially the Urban Sketch one, because I don't know what it is. I really like bespoke palettes. I I kind of like those palettes that are put together by other artists or put together by um, uh, by different companies. Like I like the Derwent Line and Wash sketch. It's just something like I, I just like to kind of grab it. Somebody else has picked it out and I'm going to be creative within these limitations. So I got these to review. I'm really curious as how they rate versus the, because that was the thing, I wanted to compare dried down tube core paints versus the the extruded pan core paints just to see if they're different at all because I probably have not all the colors in the granulator set. I do have some of them though. Actually, 
I don't have all of them, but I do have, uh, I do have at least four in the granulator set in a tube. I, um, I think I might have all the colors that are in the Urban Sketch set, and I think I might have all the colors that, oh, uh, maybe all but one that are in this set. So I'll be able to compare them side by side so we can see how the pans rate next to the tubes. I'm not sure if you can get the pans open stock or not from them, but I was curious and I bought them and uh, yeah, <laughs> I, have no ex I have no excuse, I have no excuse, but I did, um, I did actually send a couple big boxes of art supplies in with my husband to work to one of his co-workers um, had just gotten divorced and had gotten custody of their children so they have a middle schooler a grade schooler a middle schooler or a high schooler and um, they're really into art and they don't have any uh, I don't know if they don't have any supplies but they really into art and they um, uh, they don't have a ton of supplies so I made up some big boxes of, uh, of supplies for them and it was funny uh, if you watched my podcast last weekend with Sarah from So Craftastic I had asked her what she would put in craft kits for like uh, different age groups and uh, I got some really good advice there although these are more art supplies and craft supplies although I did send perler beads because I have so many perler beads and the little mats from when the kids were little and like I'm never gonna do this again I kept it for the longest time thinking maybe I would use little beads as spacers or components and it's like Lindsay just let it go to someone who will use it because I was also thinking well I could use the the perler bead mats for like stamping on a gel plate before I you know, pull a print, I could use it for like rusting things onto dry because they're like a bunch of little pins. It's like, yeah, I could, but I have other things that I could do to make similar textures and these are not getting used. They're in a drawer. They could bring somebody joy. Let them go, girl. And so I did. So I've somewhat balanced the universe. I don't know. I don't know. So I did a <laughs> that video that I did on um, making your own palette from some junk on the side of the road. So <laughs> somebody posted, Musely posted one of the viewers. Uh, she posted, I think it's a she, I don't know. Um, it's a, when you have a weird like screen name anyway. Uh, they said the universe is back in balance because <laughs> you've made something out of trash. <laughs> like, but now I've set it out of balance with these. But no regrets. No regrets there. I'm, you know, no, my only regrets are potentially missing the full totality of the eclipse. But then again, but then again, you can't, you can't know if you're going to regret something unless you do it. So I don't know. I don't know. I feel like my, my bun is falling back. Okay. So I, I did the, I washed my hair today and uh, then I, I blow dried it and I was just like, I am like, I could curl it, but it's pouring. It's pouring, so I decided that I didn't want to do that. So actually, I'm putting it back up. I haven't had my hair up in, in quite a while. I think in the winter, I tend to want to, uh, I tend to want to have it down. I think it's, I think it's just because it's like more warm. Of course, I gotta have some little bangs down because I can't be completely like a school marm here. Um, so I don't know, but uh, I love hair wash day because my hair is so soft and clean. <laughs> I'm not a sketchy hobo at the moment. <laughs> Ah, so fresh. So fresh. <laughs> oh my, oh, let me see, what else do I have on my list? I had things to talk about, you know? Uh, I wasn't just gonna complain about not going to see the eclipse, something I was in my full control. That's the thing, it's like people that complain about stuff they fully have control over, it just drive me nuts, and what did I do? I just complained about stuff I fully have control over. Ugh. <laughs> um, so, oh, I did it, well, I haven't finished this project. I've started this project, so I don't know if you remember, um, Oh uh, gosh, what was it? It was probably last summer. It was last summer. Ah! Goodness gracious. My sketchbook. I lost my sketchbook. Um, so last summer I was playing volleyball. <laughs> I had a I had a new interest. I was playing volleyball last summer. And um, I had a, a tennis dress that I really loved. Actually, I don't even know if it was what it, what you call it, really. It was just kind of like a little cotton dress. And it was very comfortable to play pickleball and tennis and things like that in. And um, I wanted to make some in different colors. And I was like, hmm, I wonder if I can just trace this and make a pattern and sew it up. And so I bought the fabric. And it sat in a bag on my, you know, on my shelf of things I wanted to do next four months and then I was doing a big clean and I'm like, you know what? That was fantasy Lindsay. Reality Lindsay is not making that project apparently. 
and plus then I'd stopped playing volleyball because I got really nervous that I was going to break my hands or wrist or something because some of the people that play are kind of rowdy and because um, it's a it's a I'm not saying all men are rowdy but I'm going to say that certain men that played volleyball in that uh I don't know if you call it a league or what, we're just kind of like they jump in your space and I just felt like I was going to get like um, bulldozed in those games. So I'm like, you know what, it's not worth it. If I break my arm or my hand and I was getting bruises, like I was getting all these bruises on my forearms, I'm like, uh, it's not worth it. I just got really nervous about that. So I stopped playing volleyball and I'm like, I don't need to make those dresses. And so then uh, I folded up the fabric and I put it in with my fabric, in the fabric drawers. And then um, the shirt that I wore, I don't know if it was last week or the week before, but it had a, a, like a plaid pattern on it. It was a wrap shirt. And I realized it comes, you can like fold it out flat. And so I took some big, like I have big rolls of paper in the room for, for like covering up tables or making wrapping paper with or whatever. It came from Paper Mart back in the day when I used to do all those Paper Mart videos. Um, and so I, I cut off a huge piece of the white paper and I took it upstairs, laid it down on my bedroom floor, and then I just traced out all the panels from that shirt and I made up I made a pattern hopefully it's gonna work out all right I've never done that before but um, I'm one step closer before I just had the idea I think that Lindsay had the idea of making the pattern and and doing that reality Lindsay has actually taken the steps of buying fabric and tracing it out so I'm gonna use the fabric I was gonna that I bought last year to make tennis dresses with to make a wrap shirt and I actually have three fabrics but one of them has a fairly distinct pattern on it, so I'm not going to do that because that's that's just too much. But I have one that's coral and one that's black, and I think those are great colors, and I think the shape of the garment is really good. And I just have to remember to add a seam allowance because I just kind of traced it as it was. Um, and also, the other thing that I'm a little unsure about is that on the inside like the the there's a um, there's a tie on the side and the tie in from tie to tie. So from about waist up around your neck to the other waist, there is what looks like a binding, but it's the same fabric as the the um, uh, the shirt. So it's like they might have made a bias tape or a like a seam binding from the kind of like you know when you do a quilt binding, that's kind of what it looks like. Um, so I think they might have made some binding from that material, and I can't see any seams, so they probably cut it like on a bias or something and went like a I don't know. I don't know how they did it, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to sew the shirt because that would be the next to the last thing you would put on. You would put that on before you put the tie, and I'm going to see what it would be like if I just hemmed it. Um, I think I'll be able to tell like how sturdy the fabric is. I, I it's a, it's like a it's kind of like a little bit of a stretch fabric, so I think I'm going to need some sort of binding there, or at least to like make like a strip, take some strips of of that fabric and sew them together, and then make a little make a binding like I would for a quilt and just do that on there. So I think because you need something that's a little bit stable because there is a snap when you crisscross them over there's a snap and then there's um, a button on the inside and a button loop that you would loop like the button from one side to the loop on the inside or vice versa and then you've got the tie and um, I think it might need a little bit of that structure to it but I don't think it's going to be terribly complicated and I'm looking forward to doing that project so and now that I realize I can sew on my main table here in this room now that I have that I have a shelf on the end of that table it's heavy enough that's like keeps it from vibrating that I can uh, I can sew at this table I'll have plenty of room to do that but I'm going to get the colored pencil class done first I think because that has just been um what do you call it? What do you call it when you have something it's a is it a juggernaut maybe it's a juggernaut it's just yeah it's just kind of like monolith I don't know, Monarch? I, the name Methuselah comes to mind, but that's not it. That's the old guy from the Bible, right? Methuselah? Uh, I don't know, but it's uh, it's something that snowballs and it's big. And I'm trying to, I want to keep it, I want to condense it as much as I can so that it's not overwhelming. I want people to get in, get the information, and be creating. And uh, yeah, I'll have the full, full projects to do so that you have something to create, but I also... I just want people to glean everything they need to glean for using col colored pencils with mixed media. At least in my style, anyway. If they like the way I use it, then I think they'll like the course. Um, but, I don't know. Ah, I always get a little bit um, ew, before a class, because it's like, is it going to be good? Are people going to like it? Is it are people going to learn? Is it going to be, you know? And then I've got, I, I really wanted to launch it towards the beginning of this month, because next 
middle of next month I'll be going to France and I don't want to be going overseas where I'm not going to have solid internet or the time to be constantly checking in during a launch period because that when you have so many more students that are active, you've got you're gonna have so many more questions and you're also gonna have like so many more opportunities for some tech difficulties. And a lot of times it's not necessarily a tech difficulty with our with uh, the website. It can it's often with the user's computer, like it needs to be refreshed or it needs to be rebooted or cache cleared or something, you know, a lot of times it's just a little something sticky with their tech that I can't even help, but you, you still have to be be responsive because Otherwise, like I just paid for this thing and you're not helping me, <laughs> you know, I want my money back or charge back or whatever. And those, you know, I don't, I pride myself on the fact that I have a very low return rate and a very low chargeback rate in my school. So, um, and I want to keep it that way, but there is no perfection. There is no perfection. So, um, and speaking of, you know, when I was thinking about, I, I should have gone north and had that perfect moment. But then what am I always saying? It's like, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Don't let the potential perfect thing that you could have done and could have had cloud the fact that you had a really spectacular view. You had a really spectacular afternoon. You got to experience this. A lot of people didn't get to experience it, but you know, they, the you know, don't let that, it could have been better though, you know, cloud you. Just like, don't not create art because it's not going to be the best thing you ever painted. Um, don't, you know, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, I guess. Don't cut your nose off to spite your face. Don't, uh, don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. And it's like, I would, if it, I, I know there are so many people that won't create art because it's like, well, if I don't have the time to make it perfect, then what's the point? If I don't have the time to, um, you know, make something that's worthy worthy of sharing on social media, what's the point? If I don't have the time to, um, you know, do my best, then what's the point? It's a, it's progress. You're going to get yourself closer to that point you want to be by showing up every day and doing something every day. Um, and of course, like I missed playing April yesterday because I was just too exhausted for trying to do an 11 hour, an 11 hour month of work and or do a month of work in a day or, or something because I saw a productivity video. But um, hey, I did my best. I did my best, you know, and that's all we can do is we can do our best. I think that I think that oftentimes we have this like uh, we have this this fantasy version of our life and we have this fantasy version of ourselves and we buy things for these, this fantasy version, like me, like I'm going to buy this perfect sketchbook and these perfect colored pencils and these perfect watercolors because one day I'll be good enough to use them. And we're like keeping them for one day. We're keeping them for best. And, and, but we're not putting that time in to get ourselves to that point for where we'd want to use those products rather than just using them now. And it's like, we're walking a path and every time we do these things or we want these things, that veer off of our path, if we don't actually take steps to do them and bring those things into the fold, bring those things onto our path, it's kind of like, say you bought a bunch of expensive art supplies because you want a fantasy you wants to do them, or you bought a bunch of yarn because fantasy you wants to learn how to knit, or you bought all this stuff, that sets you on the fantasy you path. But if you're not actually going down that path, that these, like you're on this path and the fantasy you path is going over there. And then like the wider the chasm gets between those two paths, the less authentic we feel. And then the less, the, the more shame we feel about not living up to our potential. So if you, if you get the thing, use the thing. If you want to do the thing, just do the thing, but don't expect to be perfect right out of the gate. Don't expect to be creating that, you know, fantasy project or being that fantasy person, you know. The first time you do something, don't expect to be hanging, your work hanging in a museum the first day you pick up a paintbrush. You know, you've got to take steps towards it. And um, making bad art, and I said this in, on Instagram the other day, it was something I wasn't happy with, but I was posting it because I was doing the Plain April challenge. So I was just, gonna, I was gonna post it. Um, and it's like, well, even, even bad art, is better than no art, you know, making bad art, spending time making bad art is better than making no art, art at all. And a couple people said they really resonated with that. And um, I think it's true, you know, I mean, at least you did something, at least you tried. Uh, it's better to try and to fail than to not try. And the, the only difference between somebody that's successful and somebody that's not is the amount of failures that have stacked up behind the successful person. Successful people will fail more times than, um, than unsuccessful people. If you think of it that way, you know, the more failures you have, the more successful you'll be. That's kind of, it, it can kind of encourage you to try, I think. So let's see, I have a little extra filming time because I had to, 
<laughs> change the battery. That battery, boy, that's the original battery that came with my camera. Um, and I actually just ordered two new batteries because my, I was noticing that one would like, I'd start off with three bars and then it would, you know, go, we, we had no, no juice like we just did uh, at the beginning of the video. Um, so I had bought another, another two pack of the off market ones that I've been using so that I'll have four in rotation. That one's going to have to go bye bye. But, uh. That one's lasted really long. The Lumi, the I, I find like the actual brand name batteries do last longer, but the price, the juice is not worth the squeeze with them. The price is so much higher that it's not really worth the extra, um, the extra money, in my opinion. Um, and just seeing if there's any other. Oh yeah, I did have some my failed experience experiments. So like I said, we fail, we try, we fail. Sometimes it works out, sometimes it doesn't. So on Tuesday, when I was trying to wrap up all the in progress projects I had, so I could spend a day having my super most productive day ever, um, I had I had these these experiments, and one posted yesterday. Uh, so Friday it was a frugal Friday tip on waxing your watercolors. So I was using this product called home decor wax and back in the day back when i used to do tons of sponsored videos i did um a video for um for home decor wax home decor it was folk art paint the, their home decor chalk paint line and then i did a video for martha stewart crafts and their chalk paint line and both, both of those are under the plaid umbrella not that i was working for martha stewart oh my gosh can you imagine i would just have a uh, I don't know. <laughs> I would pass out. I would be like, oh my gosh, Martha Stewart. I totally would not have my cool. Um, and I started watching this actually on HBO. There is a series on her, uh, like, uh, on like her kind of life and times. And she's remarkable. I mean, say, think what you want about her. Say what you want about her. Um, she has had a remarkable journey and um, it's been very interesting. I, I haven't finished it yet, but it's on HBO. Uh, what do they call it now? The, they call it Max, which is so foolish. Why? Why change that? It sounds too much like Cinemax to me. I would think if I was HBO, I wouldn't want to sound like one of my competitors. But um, anyway, it's on there if you have that. But it's fascinating. She's a fascinating woman. You know, whether you like it, love her or hate her, she's, she's a heck of an inspiration. You know, she's really, she's really remarkable. Um, and you can't say she's not remarkable, even if you don't like her, I don't think. What are we for time? Oh, we're almost out of time. Um, Oh, that train jumped the tracks. I have no idea what I was talking about. Oh, fail projects. So, uh, so I did a successful project with that, and I, really, and I have three jars of the clear wax because I hate waxing furniture. I will put poly coat on it because I'm not going to wax it every six months. I know me. That is not me. Um, I know Reality Lindsay does not wax her furniture every six months. You, reality Lindsay's lucky if she dusts her furniture once a month. So, um, so I have these three jars of the stuff, and I wanted to use it for something. And so I was like, well, I wonder if I, it could be a good product for teachers to do batik with their students you know, on fabric, and I tested that, it took forever to dry, and it looked cool, but it was not a batik substitute, sadly, because I would have just given it to some teachers I know, um, so that was a bummer, and I had some other projects with that that just didn't pan out, um, but I had a couple other DIY sketching tool videos, a DIY sketching easel, and a DIY sketchbook strap, that is gonna come up in the next couple of weeks, I think they're fantastic, so had some winners, had some losers, but that's how it goes, and, uh, in the crafty world, in life in general, I guess. So I hope you're having a wonderful day. I hope you were not filled with existential crisis and regret. Um, if you are, I just wanna give you a big hug. I hope it's going well for you. And thank you as always for watching. Until next time, happy crafting. Bye.